Hello everybody, this is RemyNub1337, the most elite noob on YouTube, and today I will be talking about the console wars, exclusives, and my opinion on what all this means. Before I begin, please understand that this is an opinion, not a news article. I personally feel that the facts evidence support my theory, but this is still a theory until proven otherwise enough times by enough people. So here's the thing. The console wars have been a big part of gaming for a long time now as is the conflict between console, PC, and yes, even Mac. The problem is, a lot of random opinions tend to get thrown around while little or no evidence is involved in the debate at all. I feel that we as a people are evolved beyond that, and should know better by now. We should be presenting evidence to support our claims instead of hating on each other. Therefore, let me begin with exclusives. Exclusives are typically the result of a contract between a developer and or publisher and a particular company of choice, such as Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, or various others depending on how far back you want to look. If I am not mistaken, the only benefit to the publisher and or developer is that if I understand correctly, they get paid for the contract. Exclusivity contracts typically benefit the system in question by increasing its sales by making the player have to have that particular system in order to play the game. The latter part is where I see a problem. Let's use the past as an example, shall we? So let's say you like the Final Fantasy series. That means in order to play most of the series, you've had to buy a PlayStation, period. You had no choice in the matter. PlayStation could have been the crappiest console in the market, and you'd have had to buy it anyways because of Final Fantasy, if you wish to play that particular game. That in itself is where I see a problem. Whenever you were forced to buy a certain product in order to use another person's product that you like, the first product can be as crappy as they want, and while they might not be as successful then, they can still be successful. A lot of the motivation to actually produce a good product is lost in the process because there isn't as much need to do so in order for the product to succeed. Now, yes, I do understand that there is still a drive, since they want to succeed more, but that's not the point. The point here is that doing a good job is no longer an absolute necessity. The only thing motivating them to do any better is to convince these developers and publishers to sign an exclusivity agreement in the first place. That's not a very powerful drive, though. They only need to be sufficient in order to get that. They no longer need to worry about their competition. They'll get their sales off exclusives. How many of you bought an Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 last gen? How many of you also bought a Wii? How often did you play each? Some of you may have only bought one but there are a lot out there who bought at least two of those consoles. Why? They were the same generation. You should have only needed to buy one, but because of exclusives, you had to buy more than one. That is the point I am trying to make. Even though one of them most likely was superior at meeting whatever your needs are, you bought both anyway. These companies are no longer competing for your money. They are competing for exclusivity contracts. I have seen countless complaints over the internet about one thing or another the company did where they completely ignored the needs or wants of their cons consumers. This is why they, to me, appear to be more worried about exclusivity contracts. As far as appealing to the masses go, they are only really worried about being sufficient enough to keep the console war going. This is where the console wars come in. Let's be realistic here. Other than the occasional fanboy, and of course the occasional exception to the rule, since there is always an exception to the, any rule, how many people bought one console over the other instead of buying both or neither? Not saying they conspired to create the phenomenon. They don't even need to anyway. It seems to be human nature to want to pick a side and fight for it. Why do you think we have so many factions in countries? Why do you think in large countries we break up even further into states, cities, provinces, or what have you? It's in our nature. They don't need to conspire to make that happen. But they definitely can market on it and plan on it once it does inevitably happen. It is my opinion that the only thing the console wars achieve is making you talk about it more. It gets the marketing and advertising without having to spend much more money. Now, I know a lot of you are going to start citing winners of previous console wars and try to use that as proof that I am wrong. But stop to think a moment. Does it really matter who was the biggest, or sold the most, really? 
or does it matter more that they were successful at all? That they made millions off their product, got way more back than they invested. Take PlayStation 2 versus Xbox, or PlayStation 3 versus Xbox 360. In both cases, does it really matter at the end of the day who sold more? They both sold millions. They both made a ton of money off their console system. In a way, they both won that war. One just might have sold slightly more. Anyway, that's my opinion on this whole ordeal. Do you think I'm right on a few points somewhere? Do you see flaws in my argument? Or do you think I'm just some jackass who doesn't know what he's talking about? Please rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. This is RobbyNub1337, signing off.